This is the International Soccer Preview and we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 17. We're looking at the squads of the 2023 Gold Cup. This is the short version for Costa Rica's players. Here we go. It's June and welcome back to those of you who uh, watched part one and welcome uh, anew to those who are just watching the short video. So uh, for those people, I'll give an explanation of what we did in part one, which was we gathered a list of uh, candidates for Costa Rica based mostly on um, recent perform uh, recent um, participation and uh, a bit on their historical participation too and we compiled that list into um, uh, we organized it into positions and then we organized those positions into who is likely to play and who is not likely to play you'll see that list uh, because we're going to go through it again here. So uh, uh, just one note for Costa Rica. Uh, we've been talking about their need for renewal for a long time, and they seem to have done a bit of that, albeit quite suddenly. Uh, seven players uh, on the 23-man roster here that we didn't predict. So three of them were in our files, and four of them were not, uh, brand new, uh, just coming onto our radar. So we'll show you those uh, as we go through. Uh, let's begin with uh, the manager, I guess. Uh, we can say that he successfully made the squad, not uh, fired like the Mexican manager uh, was. So uh, Luis Fernando Suarez leading Costa Rica through the cup. And uh, we move on to goalkeepers and we begin with a surprise. Uh, our likely candidate, Patrick Siqueira, and uh, not selected. Um, we don't have an injury note on him or anything. Uh, just selected for the preliminary squad, but not for the final squad. Uh, Costa Rica do have a lot of goalkeepers to choose from, but uh, that is still a surprise. The other definite candidate is uh, Kevin Chamorro, and he was selected for the final squad. And um, we have two possible candidates. One is Esteban Alvarado. And the other is Alexander Lescano. So Alexander Esteban, uh, sorry, um, uh, Esteban Alvarado not even making it to the preliminary squad, uh, even though we considered him a possible candidate. And uh, Alexander Lescano um, not only making it to the preliminary squad, but the final squad. So he is our second goalkeeper, Alexander Lescano. Um, we had two possible but unlikely uh, candidates and uh, people just looking at the short version may wonder like, good Lord, Kaylor Navas uh, as a uh, possible but unlikely. Uh, but that's the kind of thing we talked about in the first part. We kind of justified why we were uh, categorizing them the way they did. In the case of Kaylor Navas, he never plays a gold cup. So we didn't really uh, expect him. And uh, the fact is, he actually uh, 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 was um, more considered than we thought he was. Um, he made it to the preliminary squad. And then I saw a 24-man uh, squad with his name on it. So it looks like he was the last man cut. Of course, they would like to use him. Uh, but we figured between him not... Uh, not attending Gold Cups in general and having played the World Cup in 2022 there, uh, we uh, uh, are surprised that he was even considered as much as he was. But he is not on the final squad um, and that matched our expectations. Uh, and Lionel Moreira, Lionel Moreira did not even make the preliminary squad. So despite having all of those goalkeepers, the third goalkeeper is a new candidate. So it is um, Joseph Delgado. Uh, Joseph Delgado coming in as a new keeper. He uh, appeared on the bench in their last two warm-up games uh, immediately before the tournament. That was his first appearance uh, for Costa Rica, and he plays for Perez Zeladon in Costa Rica. So, uh, Joseph Delgado, probably on the bench here too, but um, uh, 
interesting selections among goalkeepers there. For defenders, uh, we do uh, start with a veteran, and he was our definite candidate, Francisco Calvo. So he was selected, as was Kendall Waston. So there's a fearsome central defense for you. And um, we also had likely candidates, uh, Oscar Duarte. So we're going to talk about him later. He just made the preliminary squad here, but actually uh, listed as injured. We'll get to that in the summary section at the end uh, when we talk about uh, injuries. Uh, the other likely candidate was Juan Pablo Vargas, and he did make the final squad. And uh, we had a possible but unlikely ca candidate in Gerald Taylor, and he just made the preliminary squad there. And here, too, we have a new candidate. So uh, rolling in the changes is Costa Rica. Uh, Pablo Arboin is uh, the, new, the uh, new candidate. And... Um, he uh, earned his first cap in February 2019, quite a while ago, and he appeared on the bench two or three times since then, uh, but uh, most recently in 2021. And then after a more than two-year absence, he returned in June 23, uh, 2023 uh, to start and finish both of their warm-up games prior to the cup. So suddenly and violently coming in, uh, Pablo Arboin as a central defender. Wow. Okay. Uh, and I do see we had um, Oscar Duarte as a bit of an injury concern uh, in the May podcast. So um, uh, uh, that turned out to be the case. Uh, Brian Ovedo was our likely candidate at left back. However, he only made the preliminary squad. Uh, and so did uh, possible candidates Ronald Mariata, uh, sorry, Ronald Matarita, and Ian Lawrence. Uh, all three of those just on the preliminary squad, but not making the final squad. And we don't have a new candidate for left back, so I suppose the plan is for one of the right backs coming up to uh, play out of position. Those right backs are Ricardo Fuller, who we had as a likely candidate and Carlos Martinez as a possible candidate, uh, both of them making the final squad. So, yeah, uh, interesting decisions here by Costa Rica. I don't know why they wouldn't uh, bring a left back. I'm dying to see who's going to be there. Um, for midfield, we have defensive midfielders, and uh, Daniel Chacon, who I thought was actually one of the new generation, he was going to make his way into the team. He was looking... Uh, pretty good, I think, in the, uh, it was the media cast we did uh, in the final round of the World Cup where he seemed to be coming in. Anyway, he's not. He only made the preliminary squad and even prior to this uh, wasn't playing that much such that we uh, had him only as a uh, possible candidate. Same with uh, Douglas Lopez and Houston Salas. Uh, same as in they too were possible candidates, and they too only made the preliminary squad. Uh, and then we had one possible but unlikely uh, or uh, candidate, Orlando Gallo, as you see on the, uh, if you're looking at the um, video on the YouTube, I have maybe move up. So I think uh, during the uh, May, uh, during part one, I was maybe thinking that... Um, uh, I had rated him too lowly, but apparently I hadn't because he didn't even make the preliminary squad. So um, possible but unlikely seems to have been the right uh, rating for him. Here too, we have a new candidate uh, or a new uh, player who has made the squad. It's Ricardo Pena. And uh, Ricardo Pena uh, started um, the last of their two warm-up games just before the tournament, and he was subbed out at halftime in that game. And he plays for a football consultant, a football consultants in Costa Rica. It's an odd name. Uh, he was loaned out to Real Betis' under-19 team, and he is uh, uh, 19 years old. So uh, Ricardo Pena, Pena, a new, uh, a new defensive midfielder. Okay, central midfielders, uh, Yeltsin Tejada, we had as a definite candidate. Uh, 
and uh, how wrong we were. He only made the uh, preliminary squad. So leaving a couple of veterans off the squad is Costa Rica. And um, we had likely candidate Fabrizio Ramez, and he only made the preliminary squad. So we're not doing that well, are we, in our predictions? Uh, and we had possible candidate Celso Borges. I, I was thinking he may have uh, uh, retired from the team because he hadn't appeared since the World Cup. But nope, he is here uh, on the Gold Cup squad. So the veteran uh, of uh, 158 caps looks like he'll get a few more here. Uh, and the other possible candidate was Rowan Wilson. And he uh, made the squad as well. So we were way off in our predictions all over the place among the central midfielder. Uh, and there is a new candidate. Well, I won't say new because uh, he had been on our radar for a while. We thought he had basically dropped out of the picture. And that's uh, Wilmer Azofaifa, or Azofaifa. We'll call him new. Uh, but really, no, I'm not going to call him new. I'm going to say... Uh, seem to be off the squad because that's uh, accurate. Um, he returned after an almost five-year absence uh, in June to start one of their two remaining warm-up games prior to the Cup. Uh, so starting one and subbing in at halftime for the other, uh, coming roaring back into the team is Wilmar Azofeifa. Uh, okay, left midfielders. We had uh, Gerson Torres as a possible candidate. He only made the preliminary squad. And Johan Vegas, not even that much. Uh, he was a possible candidate but didn't even make the preliminary squad. Uh, possible but unlikely candidate Alvaro Zamora. Alvaro Zamora made the preliminary squad but not the final squad. And here too we have another candidate who was uh, uh, on our radar. Uh, but we considered him to have been out of the picture. Uh, that is uh, Jerry Valverde. So um, he, he uh, actually appeared twice in early 2022. So we probably should have had him in part one um, because he did play in 2022. But he was off the squad after February. Uh, and uh, so he returned after a 16-month absence for the warm-up games. Um, and he started one of them and subbed in for another. So uh, Jeffrey Valverde, uh, 28 years old, just two caps for Costa Rica, those two in 2022. Uh, back in the picture, he plays for Saprissa in Costa Rica um, there. Okay, so interesting. Uh, right midfielders, we had likely candidate Suhander Zuniga. Suhander Zuniga has made the squad. Uh, however, uh, Alan Guevara, uh, we thought would seem to be off the squad and that is the case as he was not selected even for the preliminary squad. Uh, left winger, we had a likely candidate in Jewis and Bennett, but we did know about a um, injury concern with him. And so he was not selected even for the uh, preliminary squad. Uh, he was out of action since late March with a sprain, uh, a pretty severe sprain it seems. Uh, Jewish and Bennett, and we'll review that in the summary section with injuries. So uh, Jewish and Bennett, a bit of a loss to them because he is one of the uh, new generation, I would say. Uh, we move over to right wingers because uh, Jewish and Bennett, and uh, Jewish and Bennett was the only uh, player coded as a left winger. So, uh, meanwhile, we have four as right winger, and we begin with uh, Josema Alcoser. So Josema Alcosa uh, was a likely candidate and he was selected for the squad. And we had two possible candidates. Anthony Hernandez uh, is the first of them and he only made the preliminary squad. And the other one, Alonso Martinez, didn't even make the preliminary squad. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we're looking kind of ridiculous in our predictions, but it's really a surprising squad. Uh, the one we had as seemingly off the squad, Carlos Mora, uh, was selected for the final squad, wouldn't you know it? So uh, definitely um, 
Uh, going for youth here because uh, Carlos Zamora is uh, 22 years old. So um, that long called for rebuilding of the squad uh, really happening here. Uh, for forwards, we had um, uh, Brandon Aguiera, and this young player uh, was a likely candidate uh, given his participation prior to the Cup, but he only made the preliminary squad, which uh, which surprises me. Uh, meanwhile, the other likely candidate, Aaron Suarez, uh, did make the final squad. Uh, Brian Ruiz is out of the picture. He's retired now. Uh, and we have two new candidates here as attacking midfielder. The first is Diego Campos. Uh, oh, actually, these are not new. These were on our radar, so we had considered them uh, so far off the squad that we didn't uh, we didn't mention them in part one. Basically, we we didn't consider players who who had not played in 2022. That's our kind of guiding rule. Uh, anyway, uh, Diego Campos is back. He, um, oh no, he is brand new to the squad, actually. Uh, I was confused, though, because he is 28 years old. Uh, and he got his uh, uh, first caps, uh, oh, oh uh, got his first cap by subbing into one of the last two warm-up games. And he was on the bench for the other. So uh, Diego Campos plays in Sweden. Uh, for Durgafors, and he was with the club in Norway and with Chicago Fire uh, in the USA until 2020. So, um, uh, no, he is a new candidate there. Uh, and Christopher Nunez is one who we considered uh, too far off the squad to mention uh, in the first uh, part of the podcast. So, uh, um, sorry, his name is uh, Christoph Nunez. And he returned after a more than two-year absence in June uh, to start one of their two uh, warm-up games prior to the Cup. And he subbed in at halftime for the other. So making a comeback is uh, Christopher Nunez. And he plays for Lamia in Greece, a small club in Greece. Uh, all right. And finally, we have the forwards. Uh, well, Joel Campbell is uh, here. And so, yes, I was kind of trying to see whether I would label this as a B team or not, because there are a few big names gone, but I wouldn't say so. Uh, there are some big names here, and Joel Campbell, probably the biggest uh, of all. So um, he will be accompanied by Anthony Contreras, uh, the other player that we had as a definite candidate. And... Um, uh, down to the possible but unlikely category, we have Warren Madrigal, who uh, was selected for the final squad. Uh, however, Jose Pablo Cordoba uh, was not selected even for the preliminary squad. And finally, our two uh, players who seem to be off the squad, Jose Guillermo Ortez and Manfred Ugolde, uh, do seem to be off the squad as they were not selected even for the preliminary squad. Okay, well, we've introduced the new players as we went through, but we will summarize that uh, in the section. We'll do that after we summarize the notable non-selections. So uh, notably absent is uh, goalkeeper Patrick Sequeira, who we had as a likely candidate, and also Kaylor Navas, where... Uh, we didn't really know where to put him, uh, actually, because, uh, of course, they'd love to have him. Anyway, once again, he uh, is not attending a Gold Cup, even though he seemed closer this time than usual. Um, uh, the next one is Brian Ovedo. We had him as a likely candidate, the left back, and that leaves them with no left back. So not sure what they're going to do about that. Uh, we have central midfielder Yelton Tejada. Um, uh, who we had as a definite candidate, but uh, not selected. And um, we also had Fabrizio Ramirez, uh, even though he's quite new to the team. Um, we had him as a likely candidate. I, I think we maybe uh, overrated him there, though. He had just played the two games in March. Uh, but Brandon Aguiera, I think, was a valid 
uh, pick as a likely candidate, and I'm a bit surprised he didn't make it. So uh, we might turn this a partial B team. I think even that would be going too far, though. There may be reasons uh, why these players, usually it's if top players are rested, uh, we view it as a B team. Anyway, uh, surprise inclusions, well, there are lots. Uh, we have uh, a few new candidates and a few that kind of came back in from the cold. So uh, the forward war, Madrigal, um, uh, uh, we considered an unlikely candidate. He was on our list, uh, but unlikely. Pablo Airboyne, Pablo Arboyne, um, was had also been on our radar, but off the squad for a long time. Uh, Christopher Nunes, um, I'll just give the names because I talked about them above. Wilmer uh, Azofeifa and uh, Jeffrey Valverde. Uh, all of those are new. And uh, we also have Joseph Delgado and uh, Diego Campos and Ricardo Pena, those three uh, brand new to the squad, just called up in the warm-up games before the tournament. Uh, we have a few players also kind of uh, making a comeback in terms of they seem to be off the squad, uh, but were called up for the um, but were called up for the uh, uh, preliminary squad. So I'll just mention them by name, and um, uh, we didn't include them in the May podcast because we thought they were too far off the team. Uh, these would be Luis Diaz, Christian Gamboa, uh, David Guzman, uh, Randall Leal, and uh, Jimmy Marin. Uh, most of these guys played their last game in 2021. Um, yes. Okay, and then uh, to continue with the theme of uh, renewal for Costa Rica, there are also uh, one, two, three, eight, seven, uh, seven players uh, beyond the ones that were selected for the squad, seven players selected for the preliminary squad that were new to us. They were not on our radar. I won't mention them by name because that uh, uh, they won't mean much, uh, even probably to Costa Rican fans who know the team well, but uh, seven new players. So really making a push uh, for renewal now. Okay, so, um, oh, I should actually be putting these in uh, in uh, new players here. Okay, and finally, we finish with an update on injuries. So uh, we've mentioned them up above, but Oscar Duarte uh, dropped due to injury. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. He was out with a shoulder injury and uh, an unknown return date. Now, uh, the reason we weren't sure in May is because there was no report of it in his club record. And he, in fact, finished the season with them uh, playing his last game on May 27th. So I would go as far as to say we were wrong in our May podcast uh, uh, in, in thinking he was injured because he did play after that. Uh, he didn't play the very last game, but he was listed as rested for that one rather than injured. So now it's coded as a shoulder injury with an unknown return date. And uh, and there we have it. Uh, and then the other player dropped due to injury is Jewis and Bennett. They knew that far enough in advance that they didn't put him on the preliminary squad. So he was out of action since um, late March uh, and until the end of the season. Uh, with a sprain, which doesn't sound too serious, but given how long he's been out, uh, it must be. And he has an unknown return date. And then we have one player who was injured, but was never a strong candidate anyway. And that's uh, Houston Salas, who, who we had as a possible candidate. And he's out with an, uh, a muscle injury and an unknown return date. Okay, well, that brings us to the end, and we hope that that uh, deepens your appreciation of Costa Rica. We'll help you enjoy watching them more. Bye-bye for now.